Hi, everybody. Welcome. My name is Lizette Chin, President of Men's at UBM Fashion. I'd like to welcome you to the Men's Fall Winter 1920 Trend Webinar, co-presented by Fashion Snoops. Today, we'll be covering the biggest trends in menswear, and we'll introduce you to the brands that are bringing these trends to life during New York Men's, which is Project New York and Market New York, and, Mag and the Magic Marketplaces, which contains Project Las Vegas, Tense, Now, Marketed Project, Magic Men's, and the district community. Before we start the presentation, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items. Number one, please note you'll be placed on mute for the duration of the call. All questions will be addressed via the Q&A log or at the end of the presentation. Number two, if you experience any systems issues, click on the help option that's on your registration reminder email. And number three, if you find a delay at any time throughout the presentation, please try refreshing the page or changing the browsers. Today we are joined by Michael Fisher, Vice President and Creative Director for Menswear at Fashion Snoops, who will be presenting the trend content during the webinar. We are also joined by Celeste Bohm, VP of Retail Engagement at UVM Fashion. Michael and Celeste will both be available after the presentation to address any and all questions you guys may have. Let's talk about the men's marketplaces. This January will mark the launch of some exciting new shopping communities and events during both New York and Magic Las Vegas. Coming off of our successful launch in, new in Las Vegas, now at Project, we'll be introduced to New York during the January market. And with it, we'll bring a curated selection of culturally relevant brands that are moving streetwear into the mainstream. It will also be supported by live content um, in collaboration with WGSN and High Snobiety. The New York Marketplace will also, will also emphasize market with newly expanded international pavilions. As you guys all know, we have big pavilions uh, for the Made in Italy section, uh, the Brits in New York section, and we're introducing um, uh, our group for, that, that come to us from France. Menswear in Magic Las Vegas will be headlined by Project, The Tents, um, and within Project and The Tents, there's now our Now section, as well as the Market section, and then our reimagined Magic Men's, which many of you formerly knew as The Collective. Both coasts will connect buyers with new and exciting brands, just to name a few, Champion, both in New York and in Las Vegas, Brand Equity Showroom, Timex. Uh, Vince Barber is, selling their, uh, is celebrating their 125th um, anniversary. Uh, Nadam, who, who basically hit the market direct to consumer and is realizing that their wholesale strategy is equally as important, will be showing in New York and Las, and Las Vegas, as well as hundreds um, of other brands. We also will have influencers and tastemakers in the fashion community, like I mentioned before, from High Sobiety, as well as Cool Hunting here in New York, to name just a few. We're excited. The New York show um, is, is, is robust, has about 300 brands. Our Las Vegas show, we are proud to announce, is sold out. Um, so it is um, going to be a very comprehensive, complete look at the entire menswear industry. So we're excited, and we invite each and every one of you to join us at both, you know, on both coasts, both New York and Las Vegas. Uh, that's it for me for now. Um, I'm going to pass it on to Michael, who will begin the trend presentation. Thank you very much. I'll see you on the show floor. Thank you so much, Lizette. Uh, we are ecstatic to be, once again, the official trend partner of all the UBM fashion shows. It's something that our team really enjoys each season. We hope that if you're in Las Vegas, you'll come out to sourcing and check out our trend galleries where you'll actually be able to see our trends come to life with some cultural events. You can feel the fabrics and see the colors and everything. So today we're going to go through the four seasonal narratives, as we call them, for fall, winter, 1920 for the menswear market. You will be able to come away from this at the end of today, not only knowing the cultural connections for all of the trends, but we hope that we're going to arm you with a checklist of not only key items, but also fabrics and silhouettes and even colors to look for as you walk all of the shows in New York and Las Vegas. 
Before we actually get into the fashion of it all, we want to show you how it is connected to culture. And anyone that has joined us for previous webinars, you know that we like to do this. It's something that we're really good at. So let's start there for a few minutes. Uh, today you're going to see four seasonal narratives for menswear. We call them Kindred, Composite, Arcadia, and Lair. They tie to four of our macro trends. Now we've been tracking these cultural macro trends for over two years at this point. So if you are a client to our service, you're able to, of course, go on and see how these are tracking, how they're being confirmed and validated. So today, for just a few minutes before we jump into the fashion trends themselves, we want to show you the four macro trends from culture. And those include All In, Selfishly Aware, Life 3.0, and Pursuit of Happiness. So let's start with All In. This macro trend is something that's really about humankind uh, as a whole needing to come together again. Uh, there's no one out there on this webinar right now that's not oblivious to the fact that we are a very divided nation, we're a very divided world, um, and there's a lot of issues going on right now. So uh, as a team, we felt it was really important to start tracking the cultural shifts of consumers wanting not only their brands that they purchase from, but also everything that they participate in to really be about community. And that's what All In is about. There is a renewed longing for communities to feel close. There's a need for consumers to want to try to understand each other. You'll notice, that, of course, there's a huge um, uh, impact on empathy in a lot of advertising campaigns. And, of course, diversity being an important key factor as well. There is a push for more progressive societies to embrace the differences in not only your ability, but sexual orientation, gender, cultural background, and religious beliefs. And finally, this macro is really about inclusion. It's what brings uh, systematic change to us as a whole for culture. And we are hardwired as humans to want that connection and belonging. Some takeaways that I would like for you to consider for this cultural macro is, of course, the gender blur. More and more, there are gender-neutral uh, inspired assortments, especially as you walk the trade shows. I want you to also notice the importance of inclusive design. The image here is actually from Tommy Hilfiger's uh, inclusive collection, but there are many other manufacturers and brands that are doing it as well. And this, of course, focuses on consumers that perhaps have physical disabilities as well as you know, children that have autism and, and things of that nature. We want to focus on new classics. How do we take the tried and true menswear classics that we all love and put a new spin on them? There is a great emphasis on denim here. I know a lot of our partners that are in the denim world are going to be very happy to hear uh, that we are noticing an uptick in interest in denim once again. And finally, local shopping centers. Really, this is kind of a general store mentality that uh, we are encouraging people to undertake, whether that's in department store environment or in you know, specialty brick and mortar. Uh, but we love that localized bent. Our second cultural macro trend today to consider is selfishly aware. And this is really looking at the cause and reaction of, of course, everyone being uh, on social media. Our entire lives are lived on Instagram and Facebook and every other kind of uh, tool that you can imagine. Right now, Gen Z and millennials are spending up to nine hours or more a day on social platforms. 30% of all time is spent online and, of course, allocated to social media interaction. It's really interesting that we've been tracking this for two years, and of course, anyone that owns an iPhone now has the tool to, of course, track your screen time. And uh, I don't know about you, but for me, it was really eye-opening to see uh, how many hours a day in a week that I actually spend uh, on social media. Also, we want to look at our dependency on likes and, of course, being obsessed with people following us, and that is turning into a form of social currency, which is very important for the brands as well. The Instagrammable design uh, movement is where products and spaces are created with instant photographs. Of course, this is appealing to consumers that want to not only brag about their experiences, but it's great for the brands as well. And finally, we want to look at technology companies like Google and Snapchat and Apple are, of course, considering glanceability as a form and function and a means to limit our distractions. The four cultural takeaways we would love for you to learn from this is shock value design. This is, of course, great for interior design, but also uh, expands to clothing as well. Uh, this is not a trend for the wallflower. 
Uh, also, we want to look at flexible living. This is really about modular design. And not only does it have to do with physical things like furniture, but we are noticing more and more clothing uh, that is convertible depending on, uh, you know, the day, the time of day that the man is using it or, of course, where he is. Also, we want to look at artistic collect uh, collectives, which is surging. Uh, this photo here is uh, Brockhampton, which is a boy band that composes of about 18 young men that completely uh, change out uh, depending on the time of day or the, the day and the week. And this was, uh, this was an interesting collective they did with the sneaker brand. And then finally, we look at bold statements. Uh, consumers are making really bold statements on their clothing, whether it's their opinion on politics uh, or, of course, it could be something a lot more uplifting like love. Our third macro trend is Life 3.0, something that we're all familiar with, of course, in this industry. It's not really a science fiction conversation. It's really a conversation of today. Uh, you know, you can never underestimate how quickly technology is going to affect our industry. We all know that it took years for some of the biggest designers, uh, design houses to actually start getting integrated into not only online, but also Instagram and, and other social media. So, you know, it's really not a, it's not a conversation of science fiction. It's really a conversation of reality. The impact of robotics of all forms is really going to be one of the most important agents of change not only in the 21st century and the years ahead, but really in our industry specifically. Um, early adopters of, um, of course, uh, IoT have already been demonstrating how smart homes, vehicles, and AI companions are improving our daily lives. This is really about technology being integrated into every facet of our day from morning to night. And finally, there is a concern for online privacy and protection Anyone uh, on the webinar today that, uh, that is working for a brand knows how important it is to protect our customers' uh, information. There's massive volumes of data that we're all sharing, and so that is a big conversational topic to the consumer. And the takeaways here are really looking at performance correcting wearables, uh, which is really great. How do we integrate technology into not only athleisure, but also things like tailored clothing and accessories? There's some really great otherworldly silhouettes Anyone that's seen the street style from the last week at the men's fashion shows in London, Milan, now in Paris, you're going to notice that the bigger the silhouette, the better. Everyone that's being photographed are wearing super dramatic uh, coats and, and other shapes. So that's something we want to consider. We want to look at auto cooling and heating textiles, you know, really the next evolution of fabrics and how they can work to make our lives better. We also have some really great planetary graphics that you're going to notice really inspired by kind of the 1980s sci-fi realm. And then finally, there's ancient and modern worlds combining. This is really a conversation of augmented reality and virtual reality. We're now able to use technology to uh, be able to see what it was like for our ancestors and for other, you know, worlds and civilizations that maybe are no longer around. And our final cultural macro trend before we jump into the fashion is pursuit of happiness. This is really looking at our global community redefining what success means to them. We're all kind of challenging the traditional routes that are, that are taken to, to ultimately feel successful, to feel validated. This is definitely looking at freelance culture, uh, and it's very much driven by millennials and Gen Z as well. There is a flexibility of that freelance culture and the ideas of kind of access to other uh, communities uh, over ownership. And we want, to, uh, we want to look at that here as well. It's really all about this new creative nomad. Also, we're seeking rest, uh, and there is a deeper kind of meaning of life during all of our many holidays. There's a huge, huge industry right now for kind of extreme vacations, and that kind of falls into this. Off-the-grid travel, retreats, other shared experiences with the new community, the new tribe, that we're seeking. And then finally, there's a dawning of consciousness that's emerging in the workforce. Um, we are really, you know, we work with a lot of big retailers and manufacturers, and more and more, it's a really important topic in the corporate culture about how to make the worker happy. And consciousness and mental health are all parts of that. So the takeaways are um, there's been a really big spike in astrology interest, which I think is really fun, especially among the younger consumers. Uh, we've been tracking a lot of young men's consumers that are interested in things like the power of crystals, uh, you know, astrology, what does it mean to his career, to his creative outlook. So that's part of this. There's a lot of romantic drama when it comes to the styling, specifically tailored clothing and dress furnishings. 
We also want to look at workplace sanctuaries. Because of the freelance culture being important, there's, of course, a big emphasis on, you know, having that kind of zen moment in his everyday workday. Also, we looked at transformative travel. Again, that's kind of going to extreme uncharted places. Uh, and then finally, there's a big, big conversation on self-help care. Uh, this is really great that finally, after decades of our, you know, you know, our sisters and mothers and wives understanding the importance of, of self-care, men are finally catching on. And we're not only talking about the body, but we're also talking about the, the mind and the soul as well. So that's going to take us into our four seasonal narratives for today. You kind of now have the, the, the foundation of culture, so hopefully that will kind of help you understand how we got to this point when we talk to the fashion. So our first trend today is Kindred, which is a really great one. It's super applicable to all of the men's markets that are probably on this webinar today. Again, just to remind you, this comes from our macro trend all in. And just to give you a few takeaways, this is kind of your checklist as you go into the season before we jump into the mood and the color. There's a focus on community here. Remember that. There's another reemergence of time-honored classics. We want to look at fabrics that get better with time and age. We also want to look at suburban living. For those of you that have never heard of this term, this is a mix of urban and suburban. More and more millennials specifically are moving out of the cities and kind of taking all of the convenience and charm they love about living in the city, and they're taking it with them to the suburbs. Uh, it's kind of the hipsterification of the suburbs, if you will. So it's really creating a really interesting new energy uh, in those areas where maybe we're really sleepy uh, a few years ago. We also want to look at new applications of tweeds and other woolens. There's an imperfect harmony kind of going on with the styling. So maybe things that seemingly don't go together actually work in a really beautiful way. As I said before, general store merchandising, think about giving the guy all of the necessities when he's shopping in your, in your retail environment. Year-round layering is more and more important. Not only is it a climate change conversation, but also it's just kind of an added value conversation for the men consumer. We want to celebrate your brand's heritage. Um, this is a big, big conversation out of the top ten. And finally, denim that's not too precious. Denim that doesn't have to be unwashed for five years before he gets, you know, all of the wrinkles and lines that he wants. Denim that can actually be lived in and look amazing. Let's take a look at the mood here. Maybe I can kind of set the scene for the story. So again, this kind of concept of community has never been more important um, because of all these political and societal divisions that are kind of threatening community. We're actually finding that a lot of consumers are hungry for coming back together. So in this story, this is kind of a, a modern day John Steinbeck. That's who our team was inspired by. His emotions are certainly very heightened right now. Uh, we want to look at what is the role of heritage in today's industry, in today's world. Do we think that it harks back to a simpler time when a consumer had fewer choices and he was happy because of it? Uh, or is he finding new hope in reminders of nostalgia, reminders of family? This is a guy who feels comforted by imperfect surfaces that are made better with time. He is seeking out in the retail environment high-quality provisions, uh, that you know, really kind of nicely curate his, his daily style. You're going to notice a lot of industrial details, really kind of soft silhouettes. Uh, we feel like it's really giving a new expression of basics, which is really nice. And all in all, this is a, this is a story that's really about heart and soul uh, with today's modern menswear consumer. Um, so let's take a look at um, – some buzzwords. We find that it's always great to give you some buzzwords because um, not everyone is a creative, and so sometimes it's really good to have a list of words so you can actually communicate this to your colleagues. But this story is really about modern Americana. Again, heightened emotion, your creative community, those high-quality provisions, the role of heritage, and I think a really important one is uh, rural refinement from an aesthetic standpoint. So this is our color palette that we developed in-house. Um, these are our color names uh, on here. But kind of what you'll notice about it is that it presents this very warm mix of, you know, really beautiful bucolic golds. There's some really cooler casted homespun blues that we love. 
All in all, the entire palette has a familiarity that reaches across all the regions, whether it's urban, whether it's rural or suburban. You'll notice some really great kind of steely grays. Those were inspired by an industrial cityscape. Uh, and those kind of tone down and balance all the greens, the yellows, the khakis, and the browns. And of course, those are emphasizing the role of heritage. So looking at our materials forecast, I think what's great about this is that everything here is very time-honored. Everything has character about it. All the fabrics you see, they're cozy, but at the same time, they're rugged, they're familiar to the man, and they're also really dependable. So heavy weight for layering, all of them, really important. These are surfaces that aren't necessarily perfect, and that's actually a really good thing. So picked seams, run-on stripes, you know, knits that you know, have a little more of a heavy weight uh, appearance to them. Also notice that we kind of uh, juxtapose all of those with a really great return to heritage tailored fabrics. So the chalk stripe uh, is really important, all the flannels. And we really love the idea of backing some of these knits with some of the more winter cottons like corduroy or some other things. Looking at pattern and graphics, this is really about how do we inject that charm of rural life. So notice there's really great portraits. Those are perfect for your graphic tees. We want to look at how do we do modern quilting in kind of abstract, cool ways uh, that are masculine as well. We also included, included what we call concrete florals, which you'll see in the top middle uh, row. And these are kind of monochrome, much more masculine uh, interpretations of florals for winter. We want to look at, you know, really motivational things, uh, you know, that, uh, that are important as well. American made is a really important concept for pattern and graphics as well. And then how do we take ginghams and checks and plaids and do them in a little more of a rustic way. Now let's take a look at key items. This is for the contemporary market. The first thing you'll notice, the overcoat is super important. All my buyers out there, you must, you must include some amazing overcoats in your assortments for fall. Every demographic that we track, whether it's you know, baby boomers to Gen X, all the way down to the youngest men's wear consumer, he's obsessed with really great dramatic overcoats right now. We're already seeing it on the streets. It's already performing well at retail. So you must include these in your assortment. Um, I think that the more comfortable it is, you'll notice this one from the Todd Snyder runway is actually kind of deconstructed. So it almost wears like his favorite cardigan or his favorite sweatshirt. Um, that's what's important. We also want to look to suiting separates here that are really rugged and kind of are inspired by 1920s, 1930s, 1940s. So you'll notice a lot of functional details. You'll notice uh, the return of tailored vests again, worn in a really fashionable way. Our sweaters are really oversized. They kind of look like thrift store finds. So we want it to kind of mimic something that he found. Uh, it's almost like a, a, an heirloom, if you will. Also looking at woven shirts, we call this the provisions shirt. How do we update the classic white dress shirt uh, for this more fashionable consumer? And the way that we do that is we inject some unexpected details, whether that's going to be an active detail like an elastic waist. Maybe we do a corduroy uh, collar uh, or mold skin, something of that nature. But we want to look how do we update these, these basic workwear classics. Also, the pant here is a really great kind of uh, slim but straight fit, a little bit of a tapered fit, and it's okay for your younger customer especially to uh, inject a little bit of very traditional detail, like maybe a couple of pleats, uh, maybe a slightly fuller waist. And then finally, when it comes to knits, we want to look to really great uh, layered basics. So this is the Henley that has kind of a ribbed uh, tuxedo bib, uh, but anything that kind of can be worn either layered or on its own is crucial to the season. Looking at some footwear here, of course we uh, are still seeing sneaker boots continue to uptrend. So give the guy a really great classic upper, whether it's a brogue, uh, whether it's a work boot, uh, but then give him you know, the typical gum sole or, or a sneaker sole, it all works. The derbies are back in a really great way. Uh, find new ways to speak to the desert boots. Um, also, these really great short lace-up boots are looking really cool and I think have a great injection, a greatest spirit of, uh, of active wear as well. 
So one thing that I know our team was really surprised at was the return of the driving cap. Again, I encourage you to check out all the street style uh, in London and Milan for the last week. Everyone is wearing tweed driving caps again, so we definitely uh, expect to see that trickle down to the mass specialty retailers here in the next year. Uh, you know, anything that's tweed is performing really well. Also, these short winter scarves are really great. They kind of come in these very gauzy uh, winter fabrics. And the belts are just really deconstructed and soft. So this is a suede belt that he's, of course, able to kind of, uh, to, you know, fasten and, and, and bring down. Looking at denim really quickly, uh, we have our denim version of the provisions shirt here. So here, instead of being a white dress shirt, it's a typical denim snap front shirt, and we added really great contrast pockets to it. The denim here is a little more fashion-centric, a little more directional, playing around with the hips and the waist. And also, we have a great shirt jacket. Shirt jackets, especially for denim, continue to uptrend. So make sure that you have a version of that. This zip front version is, is really great. Uh, and then our other denim here, which is a little more opposite of the cleaner that you just saw on the previous slide, is this, uh, you know, how do we do the version of the trucker jacket for this? So it's kind of a printed Sherpa uh, collar. And also uh, you can consider doing some pinwell corduroy or some other fabrics if you don't want to do denim. The jeans here, again, look like they've been through it, which is a great thing. We're noticing abrasions and rips again, but just make sure that you keep it in a more natural sensibility. And then we love this denim blazer here with the patch pockets. Great uh, item to add into your assortments. So looking at brand alignment for Kindred, this is kind of a checklist to get you going when you're at the shows. But uh, Hiso is great for market in New York. Gorin Brothers is perfect for project in Vegas. You'll find Kinross Cashmere at the Tents in New York and Frame as well at the Tents. Other brands to consider, of course, Benson at the Tents, Agave Denim, which you'll find at Project in Vegas. Um, also at Project in Vegas, Redefined Rebel and Mazer Headwear, which is awesome for your accessories. That takes us into our second seasonal narrative for today, and this is called Composite. This is our younger uh, story of the four today. So this comes from Selfishly Aware, and let's look at the takeaways. There's a lot of focus on democratic luxury. Uh, of course, luxury is not driven by just price point, but also experience. We want to look at sporty meets handsome. Um, increasingly, we're finding that the active and uh, streetwear markets are kind of shying away from the excess, and they're more interested in things that are uh, necessary and, and also handsome. That's a big word that you'll find trending on all the blogs right now. Personalization is king. It's not just enough to offer up customization in your stores, but you need to offer personalization. Modular style, we spoke about that earlier. This is the new evolution of streetwear. There is a little bit of luster that you'll notice here, but it's sophisticated. Uh, we kind of refer to this entire look as masculine fancy. Uh, there is expressive color, really bold color. Uh, this is a continuation of casual. And then finally, we want you to rethink what does it mean to offer up classic silhouettes. So let's look at the story uh, and the mood board for composite. This is really about a, a man today who's involved in so many conversations about how to build his personal style according to his own rules. So in this story, uh, which if you don't know the definition of composite, of course it's defined as something made up of various parts or elements, and that's how we actually see him uh, reflecting his own personal style. There's this, almost this visual dialogue going on with the young men's consumer between masculine and feminine, gritty and refined, and industrial and luxurious. Um, this is a story that's inspired by a lot of uh, some of the most influential designers today, like Virgil Abloh, uh, who are kind of welcoming the best of all worlds to their aesthetic. We think that it kind of adds a much needed streetwise edge to styles that are otherwise kind of basics. Like what you see here is a track pant and a trucker jacket and a sweatshirt. So how do we kind of add a streetwise edge to that? I kind of want you to consider it the perfect mix of downtown and uptown. Um, and I think that it's kind of a beautiful fusion of sporty and formal at the same time. Let's take a look at our word bank, grit and glam, democratic luxury, push and pull, that modular style, streetwise edge, and industrial design. 
So the colors are bold. There's no doubt about it. Um, again, that streetwise inspired edge is going to give us new energy uh, to the fusion of artistic brights. Also, there's some really gritty neutrals here as well, some grays, some taupes, uh, and dark browns. We think that the palette here is kind of grounded in all those electric shades of yellow, fuchsia, magenta, and they give you that new wave influence that we want coming through. Uh, but we also wanted to calm it down. So we added some pastels in this that really perfectly complement all of the urbane neutrals like uh, the dark purple and the dark green. Looking at our materials, uh, for, for this one, it's really kind of a mix of fancy, artsy, and industrial. There's a bit of kind of a haphazard effect in the influence. Modular texture is key. Surfaces that look engineered in some way, you're going to see that there's a construction approach in a lot of the pattern or the texture. So these engineered knits is kind of the new evolution of open work. Uh, we see a lot of really great dyed poplin effects. Um, even the, uh, the cozier textures are much more emphasized, much more dimensional. All of the polys and the nylons have a luster to them. And then really, really love all of the, the velvets. They're much more kind of modular. What I mean by that is you'll notice they kind of move in really new and interesting ways. So looking at pattern and graphics, again, it has that new wave streetwise uh, influence here. So you'll notice there's a lot of spliced tradition. This comes right from the Burberry runway where they took the classic check and they added these really cool color blocking effects to it. There's also a lot of terrazzo uh, inspiration straight from the home market, and we're seeing that applied to uh, apparel as well. Really cool abstract things going on with body parts and, and faces. Um, and then when it comes to the grids, notice there that the grids are kind of um, abstract and definitely not symmetrical in any way. Looking at our key items here, the, the outerwear that you want to focus on is how do you add a luxurious bent to the coach jacket, which has been a really cool mainstay in menswear for the last couple of seasons. This one is rendered in kind of a really great, more masculine velveteen fabric with a cool animal print done over top. The suiting here is modular in its nature, so the sport coat has that kind of uh, fabric blocking going on. If you want, you could just do a really classic jacket on top and then leave the more industrial influence on the bottom. Uh, it's like a stripe on the pant. The sweaters are really kind of oversized and boxy. Anyone that's been at retail this winter has seen that, uh, especially the younger men, are definitely pulling towards uh, sweaters with dropped shoulders, really heavy rib texture. So that's part of this assortment as well. For the woven shirts, how do we add kind of a fancier effect here? And this is a fashion woven. So this is just a classic poplin shirt that we've added a really cool kind of uh, corduroy yoke uh, on the bottom. Also, how do we do fancy pants? This comes from the Bottega Veneta runway. So we did a really great track pant and kind of a lustrous nylon or poly blend. Um, you know, the, the, the sportier, the better when it comes to this. And then the knits, we look at the studio sweatshirt. So again, fabric blocking, color blocking, and oversized silhouette. For accessories and footwear, the bucket hat is back in a huge way. It's still trending really well for the young men's market. Definitely has that kind of uh, nod to the 90s. The biggest bag for this trend is the crossbody, whether it's uh, a more uh, classic crossbody like this, or of course new experimentations in kind of the, the fanny pack or the, or the waist bag. Uh, and then we love this kind of super chunky sneaker, kind of looks like it's been um, tie-dyed or spray painted. Really bold colorways are crucial. Here we're looking at more industrial influences for accessories, so nylon webbed belts that are really long, Again, here's the body bag that is perfect for all of his tech accessories. And then also there's a huge market right now for keychains and coin pouches. Uh, we're finding that, especially the younger men's consumer, it's kind of uh, acting against this need for needing no accessories uh, when it comes to wallet and things like that. So we're actually noticing a return to an appreciation for those accessories. For denim, it's really fun, really young. This is a, a, a cardigan in the middle that makes use of chambray and denim patchwork. Also, there's an anorak, that, uh, a denim anorak that has really great kind of fabric blocking here. Uh, the jeans are embellished, 
kind of styled in an inside out way. The trucker jacket comes with really cool graffiti stripes or bleached splashes. Same with the jeans. And then also you want to add some overcoats to your denim assortment. So even if you don't do a denim overcoat, which honestly is, is a bit much, uh, consider doing some really cool technical materials, which will really nicely complement all the denim. Take a look at brand alignment for uh, composite. You can uh, take a look at um, iBoss, which is going to be at market in New York. Original paperbacks, perfect for all the knits, which is at Project in New York. Uh, we have Straps Manufacturing, which is at now at Project in New York. And of course, we have uh, Wild Vertica, which is at the Tents in New York. Next, we have Icer Brand, which you'll find at District at Project in Las Vegas. Uh, at now at Project at Vegas, you'll find Koala, and then also Elbow Grease, which is going to be found at District at Project in Vegas. That brings us to our third seasonal narrative. I uh, hope you're feeling inspired so far. This is Arcadia, which is probably my personal favorite of the four. Take a quick look. Uh, Arcadia comes from Life 3.0 Cultural Macro Trend. Uh, the top ten takeaways you want to go into the shows noticing is the importance of aestheticsacks, and I'm going to explain that in just a second, but it's basically a mixture of aesthetics and artifacts. These are things that a guy wants to hold on to, make better, pass down. Uh, so these are prized objects. Also, we want to take the past into the future. There's some sophisticated wearable tech element here. How do we make techno cozy in its appearance and not so, um, and not so uncomfortable? Uh, also, we want to look at new space age. Uh, we want to look at lightweight, heavyweight when it comes to fabrics. How can something be cozy and how, how can it keep us warm, but also not feel heavy? We want to look at fabrics that move. We want to look at workwear trim. Also, the colors here are unbelievable. And what I mean by that is that these are colors that can actually be found in nature, but look almost synthetic in their reach. And then finally, good-looking utility. How do we make utilitarian classics and workwear actually look refined and sophisticated? So here's the mood for Arcadia. Obviously, there's so many conversations about the future going on. So this is all about the future. Right now, humans and consumers have always had this itch to kind of explore and discover new worlds. But they also have this need to stay grounded to the human spirit. And that's a crucial element for kind of innovation right now. We don't want to move the consumer too quickly past their comforts. It's important to kind of stay connected with everything that's important for today. So for anyone that doesn't know Greek, which I'm assuming is most of you, Arcadia is Greek uh, for a vision of utopia. So this story is focusing on the man who's kind of interested in the concepts and the designs of tomorrow. But he also stays in constant contact with what it means to be a sensory-driven consumer. So the result is a warm, very organic expression of kind of this approaching utopia. And it's complemented with just the right amount of sci-fi charm. Uh, we kind of see this as a metaphorical search for the best parts of the future. And so he's going to bring with him cultural relics of the past. And again, there's that aesthetic that I spoke of earlier. Uh, and this is really looking also at kind of retro futurism. This was a story that was very much inspired by, you know, Black Panther when it came out a year ago and kind of that look at retro futures. Um, and so there's a lot of modern lines and also really natural fabrics and natural textures. So our word bank here includes New Colony, Electric Utopia, Human Connections, Relics of the Past, how do we give him items that kind of are collectible? Uh, we want to give him relatable, a relatable future. And also Odyssey was a big part of our research. So again, the colors are, you know, eye-popping, bold, bright, and beautiful. It's kind of a lush illustration of this utopia that we're talking about. So there's a wide range of greens from kind of this ripe algae, basil to pine. Again, for the buyers on the call, Greens are very important going into your season. Make sure that you have really great tonal varieties of greens uh, in your assortment. There's a wintry mix of cool cast pastels here that are inspired by far corners of the earth. 
So you'll see the blues, the minty glaciers, the milky white. Those are all important as well. And then there's kind of a peacock blue and a cerulean blue. And those inject the importance of water uh, into the palette. And then finally, we end with crimson reds, metallic molten's, and those kind of give us that sci-fi charm that we were speaking of earlier. So looking at the materials for Arcadia, it's really this fusion of man-made and natural, but it still all feels organic when it comes to the hand. So spongy or bubbly textures, there's a lot of puckered surfaces. Unexpected and bold quilting techniques are very important to this. We're seeing really cool things done with all of the um, intarsias for sweaters. So here's kind of a cool digital mountainscape. And then the final thing I would love for you to notice is that in the lower left corner, this is a really great example of bonded techno. So taking a techno synthetic and then lining it with a really cozy jersey or, or something of that nature that's very natural in its reach. For pattern and graphics, we looked at things that kind of have that sci-fi charm, a lot of really fun takes on marbled, uh, melded marbles, also, there's really cool future architecture photo reels for your graphic tees. We look to liquid sculptures. And again, overall, this is really about kind of this retro futurism, things that maybe you would have seen in the original Star Wars movies, for example. Taking a look at key items, uh, the outerwear here, we call it the Quest Parka. This is kind of, again, the perfect marriage of, you know, technical and, and traditional. So the bottom of the parka is all tweed, a really beautiful brown-based donical tweed. This came from Z Zenya when we were uh, checking out the showrooms. And then the top of it is, of course, just a typical uh, you know, Zenya-inspired technical fabric. So we love the fusion of the two. Also looking at the tailored clothing, this is called the Orb Sport Coat. So this makes use of kind of tonal piecing uh, and really kind of interesting fusions of techno and uh, tweeds. The sweater, uh, we want to play around with, you know, again, it's a classic ribbed turtleneck sweater, which is trending really well at menswear. But we did something unexpected by putting the asymmetric zip closure on it. You could do things with color and, and other trim as well. This is uh, the Trek shirt. Shirt jackets are really important still. Uh, they're not going away. They're still uptrending. So this is just a great way to do that. This is just a buffalo check uh, you know, flannel shirt jacket, but we did a reflective taping across the front. Also, how do we do kind of a cool new take on the athleisure pants? So this is a quilted leather, but you could also do it in nylon as well. And then finally, for the knits and sweatshirts, really focus on that retro futurism. So this is kind of the Space Odyssey sweatshirt, very much inspired by, you know, all those movies like Space Odyssey 1984 and the original Star Wars, etc. So for footwear and accessories, the boot here uh, is playing around with really cool metallic uppers. Notice the mountaineering lacing systems. The knit sneakers are perfect. Uh, anyone that's been on the blogs for the last 24 hours, you've seen that Nike finally dropped the self-lacing uh, sneaker that you can actually control with the app on your phone. The perfect, perfect emphasis or uh, confirmation of, of this trend. Uh, and also we look to convertible bags. Again, anything that uh, kind of prepares him for the unexpected is perfect. Uh, and then we want to take it down a notch and be a little cozier. So the trapper hat here is rendered in a really interesting down, uh, which we thought was a great update. The scarves are kind of mimicking the favorite blankets that he may have at home. And then the eyewear is just really cool, futuristic, uh, you know, uh, shields as well. So denim here is really clean and really technical. We chose to once again show this blazer because we think that it also is perfect for the denim market. The jeans here have really cool reflective stripes on them. You can also do kind of a moto jean as well that's a little slimmer and kind of makes use of those tonal um, patches and, and whatnot. Also, we want to look to things that are a little more natural. So here is a utility jean that has kind of a patch to a uh, paneled effect the bomber here is really great for the denim market. I know every time I speak, people come up to me and ask, is the bomber jacket still going to be around for menswear? And the answer is yes. I wouldn't say that you should invest all your outerwear dollars in the bomber because, of course, we've given you some great options for overcoats and parkas. But you definitely should have the bomber. Uh, we're finding at this point that younger men are moving on from the bombers. 
but uh, the more contemporary and traditional markets are embracing it uh, in, in different kinds of fabrics. And then finally, the other genes we have here is it's actually a cargo gene. You can't even tell it's a cargo unless you're on top of it because the pockets are flat facing, but we want to add that really cool subtle way of doing utility. So for brand alignment for Arcadia, definitely check out Diplomacy at Project here in New York. Coat of Arms also at Project in New York. Para Jumpers is where you should for sure be checking out the outerwear. That's at the tents. And then Code 22 is another great outerwear option, uh, and that's at Project in Vegas. And that takes us to our fourth and final seasonal narrative for today, and that is Lair. This is our more tailored, formal, holiday-inspired uh, story for today. This comes from Pursuit of Happiness, and the top ten takeaways for you here. How do we give the menswear consumer a way to do formal in a cool, young way? We want to focus on winter cottons and wearing them together, so your corduroys, your velveteens, your cotton moleskins. This is all about sensory. So this is about the man shopping with his senses. Any of us that work in this industry know that men shop with their, their hands first. They feel the fabrics, and that's very much what this is about. We want to give him clothing for experiences. Uh, consumers overall are craving those, those Instagrammable moments, as we spoke of earlier. Uh, I'm going to speak about a really cool restaurant if you're in L.A. I want you to check out. But really, this is clothing that can go from casual to formal. Uh, we also want to look at new expressions of leather as a fabric. The florals here are dark and dreamy and very masculine. They're super sophisticated accessories. The outerwear is very dramatic. The denim is tailored. And then also overall, this is really about a gent and his club. So where does he go to decompress, if you will? So here is the mood for Lair, which is so rich and so beautiful. Obviously, there's a lot of conversations about what does luxury mean to the menswear consumer right now. We think that it actually really means about sensory and, uh, and, and layering and being able to use these clothings, uh, clothing for all of the experiences. So there's a lot of buttery leathers, blanket-like wovens, coats that kind of envelop him, the perfect power suit. Um, you know, overall, there's like this richness of opulence that really means many things to the menswear consumer. So Lair, which of course is a well-hidden resting place, uh, we think that you can find this in the grittiest corners of the city or even in his own home, but it's really about, you know, rest and, uh, and kind of having that den moment where he can enjoy whiskey, cigar, you know, really just enjoying the clothes. Um, and so we kind of love that entire, you know, uh, you know, whiskey, speakeasy influence that comes out here. So the restaurant that I was mentioning earlier that if you're in L.A., I would love for you to check out. It's called Vespertine. Uh, and it's uh, been open for, I guess, about going on two years now. But it's one of the most interesting experiences. Uh, the building you see in the lower left corner of this mood is Vespertine. Their whole, you know, mission is to kind of disrupt the modern restaurant scene. So it's in Culver City. It's a four-story building, and it's so cool because on the outside, it's wrapped in this kind of exoskeleton of warp steel. Your experiences will take you over a 17-course mill that takes place in all sorts of different scenes. Um, it's all about the presentation. So you can Google it when we're done with this webinar today. But if you're in L.A. for an event or you're there for business, definitely check it out. So for the word bank, we're looking at things like seeking seclusion, seducing the senses, new wave vintage, downtown formal, members only, and of course, handsome sorcery. There's a little bit of a witchy effect in this. So the colors are perfect for holiday. They're warm, they're mystical, the mid-tones kind of dominate the entire palette. So notice that the Dutch still life paintings inspired all the olive greens, the browns, and those give us a very rooted calmness. Also, we added in some watery accents like Eternal Blue and Baltic Green. Those emphasize the more romantic quality of menswear. And then finally, we have kind of Carmine, Rubios, and Sedona. Those inject kind of that aged and time-worn look to the colors that are usually presented as bright. So for materials, uh, this is really warm and, and romantic and really beautiful. These are kind of indulgent fabrics and surfaces, romantic and time-honored, but in a good way. The texture and the shine are really important. So we're looking at lightweight leathers, 
We want to look back to crepe suiting. I'm talking like old school Armani suiting. That's back in a really beautiful way. Textured leathers. We also look to the knits, uh, these really great kinds of um, dimensional knits uh, in art deco motifs. And of course, don't forget your winter cottons, your velvet, your corduroys. Uh, we're finally seeing a wide well corduroy come back in a huge way, which we really love because it's super dimensional. And then the silk shirting as well. So for pattern and graphics, again, it's really kind of like driven by that secret speakeasy club. So we look here to kind of these, men, uh, these really cool modern still lifes. The plaids are done in a really kind of rustic, interesting way. Notice there's a lot of reptilian motifs, the animal prints, which have been all over the runways this week. Uh, and then the florals are done in really cool, watery, smoky ways. For key items, again, with the overcoat, I can't emphasize it enough. This is called the speakeasy coat, so it's super oversized. It's almost like a duster silhouette. The lapels are really emphasized. Um, do that in a really great melton wool. Also, the suits here, we call it the Ritz suit. So anything you can do in a corduroy or velvet, uh, this is perfect. For sweaters, this is called the loft sweater. This is all about layering. So because turtlenecks are so important to the, to the fashion market right now, we love these kind of deeper Vs uh, in a merino wool or cashmere that you can layer over either wovens or other knits. So this is called the nightshade shirt. How do we do a really cool kind of going out, uh, you know, formal holiday inspired shirt? And this is kind of a silk shirting done in a really dark black base floral. The pant here is called the Uptown Pant. Again, velveteens and corduroys, but done in a really cool kind of downtown tapered way. And then this is uh, the deluxe tee. So it's just a, a typical t-shirt body that we've pieced with uh, classic striped uh, yarn dyed woven sleeves. So again, the accessories and footwear are all very classic. Even the sneakers here are just really beautiful leather uppers that can be dressed up. This is perfect for the traditional menswear market. The weekender bags are enjoying an influx again with more and more travel. Again, adding that romantic layer to the accessories is crucial. Even the portfolios we are seeing coming back. So the attache bags and the portfolios, even if a guy isn't necessarily carrying around a lot of paper, he really loves kind of the old school look of it. Also, we want to look to dress scarves, so you know, very much kind of inspired by what John Barbados has kind of cornered in the market for years. Um, we also look to, you know, sunglasses to kind of have that rectangular effect about them. And then finally, jewelry. Jewelry is a part of the accessories market that we find uh, season after season is uptrending. All the markets are driving it, but specifically younger guys who are dressing up their tailored clothing. So this is kind of like making, uh, making uh, use of tokens and other charms, but of course bracelets and watches are as well equally important to your accessories assortment. So all of the denim here is very tailored, very clean. This is just a beautiful dressed up jean that we call the luxe jean. The suit here done in a really nice denim blend. Um, and then also we have the Ritz overcoat. So this overcoat isn't necessarily rendered in denim, but we love the way the tonal black and navy blue sit with the rest of the denim in the assortment. And then if you wanted to do denim in a younger way, you could do this kind of zip front uh, shirt jacket and kind of a raw uh, denim fabric, or you could do a lounge jean, which is a little more relaxed. This is perfect for the young men's consumer. And then finally, we call this the tap room jacket. This is a classic denim jacket, but it's done in a little more of a dressy, formal way. Uh, which will look great over, you know, woven shirts and, and other dress furnishings. So our brand alignment for Lair includes uh, uh, Hiso, which is found at Market in New York, uh, Kin Kinso, which is at Project in New York. Um, also, we have uh, Carducci at Magic Men's, Paisley and Gray at Project Vegas, and Rudsack at Project in Vegas as well. So that is all of my portion for fashion. If you'd like to learn more about what we offer at Fashion Snoops, including our online uh, portal as well as our consulting services, we hope that you'll reach out to us. Email us at sales at fashionsnoops.com, and we'd love to show you uh, what we offer at FS. I'm going to turn it back over to the UBM team.
Thank you so much, Michael and Lizette, for the fantastic trend forecast. Uh, we had a few questions come in throughout the presentation that we are now going to answer. Uh, if you do have any additional questions, please use the Q&A tool on the presentation page and we will try to get to them. Um, so for our first question, what details, fabrics, or colors would you suggest incorporating to basics to give them a more street edge? So I think that that is the perfect question that plays into uh, composite when we were going through that. So, you know, it's all about the, the basic hoodie, the basic sweatshirt, and the crew neck tee, et cetera. The way that you're going to make it appropriate for the street customer is you're going to do one of two things. You're either going to add on really great kind of, you know, energetic pattern, the animal prints, the graffiti prints. If you want to still offer a really great assortment of basics, uh, you know, at your at your your retailer, uh, what you can do is you can kind of contrast, complement those. You can keep the basics with no patterns, really neutral colorways, and then set them side by side on the table with things like those, you know, pattern coaches jackets, those anoraks that come in really cool '90s inspired patterns. Because the truth of the matter is that the guy's either going to really pile on all the patterns, or he's going to kind of layer on the basics first and then kind of finish it with the more patterned, you know, pattern-heavy uh, fashion elements. So you can kind of do it in one of two ways. Awesome. Thank you. Um, we have another question. What type of trends do you think will dominate the autumn winter footwear market? Any insight on that? So I think we probably went through the most important ones today. I think that overall what I would tell you is that what we're already tracking is that um, when it comes to all the excess, a lot of the cooler consumers are turning away from that. So while it's going to take a couple of seasons for everyone to kind of be turned off by what I call the Gucci-fication of menswear, and that's all the pattern, all that kind of fancy effect, uh, the younger consumer, the coolest consumers, are actually already starting to tune in to these more handsome classics again. So, of course, we've already seen, you know, this big resurgence of things like Vans and, and Converse and all of those things. But really, when it comes to accessories, if you want to know what the younger consumer is starting to turn to, it's the really clean, basic classic ones that he's not going to get tired of uh, in a season's time. So because of that, I would start to notice it's going to affect all of our other markets, our contemporary, our traditional markets as well. Um, so that's something to keep an eye on for accessories. Thank you. Um, another question that just came in. Um, in the street world, we have seen a persistent black, white, and red color story. Is that something to continue? Black and white will never go out of fashion, especially for the menswear street market. Um, what I would tell you is that you don't want to put all of your dollars into this kind of Virgil Abloh, off-white inspired assortment. Black and white is still great. It's great to have stripes. It's great to have checkerboards. But mo primarily in the streetwear market, it's really all about these super bright cerulean blues, you know, neon greens, fluorescent yellows. All of those colorways are actually the most important. So it's great to have the black and white, but you definitely want to complement it with some really bold colorways. Awesome. Um, what other t-shirt decoration or graphics would you say will dominate in 2019? That's a really hard one because there's so much going on. What I would tell you is the most interesting thing right now is how people are doing photo reels in new and interesting ways. So Maybe a year ago, if you came on this webinar, we were talking all about like typography and words. So in other words, anyone that would pass this guy on the street would kind of know his opinion on things because it would be, you know, printed really largely on his T-shirt. Now we're finding that they're doing it in more abstract ways. So you'll, you'll find, for instance, the trade shows that we were just covering uh, and, and the ones coming up, we're noticing there's a lot of really interesting um, photo reels of, say, groups of people or protest or, um, you know, really loving, uplifting, like, photo reel scenes. So it's almost a more subtle way of doing it. Um, other kind of graphics that we're seeing, there's a huge focus on architecture, which is really great. So there's been a lot of really interesting, like, um, abstract prints of architecture, uh, really kind of futuristic architecture and things of that nature. We've been seeing that on a lot of T-shirts in the market as well. But honestly, you can't really go wrong with any T-shirt graphic as long as it's not 
trying too hard and it's not cheesy. Those are like the worst things that uh, the men, the young men's consumer especially does not want in his graphic tees right now. Excellent. Thank you. Um, another question here. Are there any updates to classic corduroy styles that we should be looking out for? So as I just mentioned in the last trend, chunky corduroy, uh, wide well corduroy, it's finally making a comeback. It's been all about pinwheel corduroy for at least, you know, five years, if not more. Um, and that's because, you know, for a while we were getting men used to the slimmer silhouettes. Well, what's really great now is that all the chunkier corduroy that we're seeing is still rendered in a nice, you know, a nice straight fit um, with a little bit of a taper. Um, you know, even the younger, um, faster fashion retailers had a version of it this winter. So um, I would say that these more traditional corduroys in really fun, rich accent colors are the most important thing to do. Uh, when it comes to like five pocket corduroy, I'm not as bullish about it. I wouldn't put as much of your dollars into these very traditional, you know, five pocket corduroy, pinwheel corduroy jeans. I would put a little more of your money when it comes to corduroy and things that are a little more dimensional and have a lot more texture to it. Awesome. Um, another question here. Will bum bags or belt bags still continue to be high in demand? What other bags will be trending for menswear? So there's two things going on. So if you saw the four seasonal narratives today, you definitely saw that utility is back in a very bold way. And when we are back in six months and we have this webinar again, uh, over the summer, you're going to hear me even talk more about utility being front and center. We've had a lot, a long time of kind of utility being hidden, which was good. But now this kind of survivalist or war core trend, if any of you have kind of read about war core, in the New York Times or on Vogue, that is really in influencing the bags. So all these belt bags uh, and crossbody bags have multiple pockets. Um, and what's really funny about it is a lot of the guys that we photograph around the world, they're not necessarily even carrying a ton of stuff in these bags. It's just a really great complement to their streetwear. Um, so it's just it's just funny how it's kind of become this like all day complement to the to the apparel. Um, when it also comes to other bags, again the weekender bags are really important. Um, a lot of guys are traveling more as we kind of showed you in our cultural macro trends. So these kind of weekender bags that are rendered in really kind of luxurious fabric treatments or colorways um, are starting to sell a little more than the typical, you know, canvas weekender bags that we've had for a long time. And of course, you know, really when it comes to travel accessories, you cannot beat, you know, brands like Away and all of these other kind of, you know, modular luggage brands. Um, those are really affecting kind of what happens in the bag market as well. Great. Um, what is happening with camo prints? It seems traditional, it's still big, but very strange combos are happening. Is this something to look out for? Definitely. Um, it's kind of funny. It's the one – I've been in the industry for 16 years, I guess, and it's the one question that I've probably been asked more than any other question, and that's, is camo still around? And I think we can't uh, deny ourselves camouflage in this market. It's literally always here. It's always present at the shows. Um, but what's really great now is that we've seen two things going on. We've seen really interesting kind of uh, younger street edge uh, inspired camouflage print. So maybe it's not like the typical traditional woodland camo, but we're seeing really cool things done with, say, like flame and fire motifs um, or florals, you know, other, other typical prints that are kind of becoming the new camo. Um, and then at the same time, this consumer that's really interested in this kind of war core um, you know, preparedness trend, they're very much drawn to the super traditional camos that we find in all of the, um, you know, surplus, military surplus stores. Um, I would definitely say that that's something to keep your eye on for the more directional market. But when it comes to contemporary and active wear, it's really just how do you add new colorways and new motifs to the camouflage. It's really bold um, and it's really kind of oversized in its, in its uh, visual impact. Awesome. We have another question here. In your opinion and based on the trend narratives, which are the most important outerwear pieces to have? What colors and what silhouettes? So hopefully you were joining us for most of today, but the outer of uh, the overcoat is the 
Most important out of our option, I, I definitely emphasized at the beginning of today's webinar, um, you must have at least a few options of overcoats in your assortment, whether you're speaking to a younger consumer or you're speaking to traditional uh, market. Everyone wants an overcoat, whether it's done in a really great, um, you know, kind of washed and, and time worn tweed or they're, or it's done in a really heavyweight melt and wool. Um, I find that the overcoats that fit like a sweatshirt or fit like his favorite sweater are the ones that are performing the best. So, you know, you know, unlined or, or deconstructed in some way. Uh, and then also the parka still continues to be super important. Find ways to do it in more refined ways. Include tweeds, include woolens, include corduroys. Don't just do only like technical material parkas, but find a way to dress it up. We have another question uh, relating to pants. Um, will baggy jeans make a comeback at any time? I don't know if they're going to affect all of our markets right away. Um, you know, it's been a couple of seasons, and a lot of people out there have kind of spoken to the younger men's consumer being more and more interested by baggier silhouettes, and that's probably because there's been a huge influx of 90s. Anyone that's been out in retail, um, you know, this year and, or last year, you'll see that the 90s is everywhere. Um, but I'm actually finding in my research that the younger men – who a lot of them are very body conscious. Uh, they're not interested in returning to super baggy jeans anytime soon. Um, so that's actually good news for us as an industry because we've spent so long getting the men's market over to a more uh, tailored appearance, if you will. So it doesn't have to be skinny. It doesn't have to be slim, um, but just has to be a really good, clean, straight fit. And if it has a little bit of flex in it, the better. Uh, so when it comes to baggy, I would be very, very cautious, uh, cautious of it at this point. Only if you're a retailer that really focuses to the most directional, skate-inspired consumer should you be kind of, uh, you know, diving into to baggy denim at this point. Thank you. We have a couple of more questions. Um, Will florals be relevant for fall and winter? I know you mentioned this in the last trend, but what other versions of florals will we be seeing? So I think my favorite versions of florals are the concrete florals that we showed you in the first story. Uh, and those are black, white, monochrome, kind of cement-inspired florals. Um, you know, just because you're wearing a floral doesn't mean it has to necessarily look feminine and fully. You can do it in really kind of rugged, industrial ways. Um, and then also when it comes to those more dressed up looks, we want to look at dark ground florals, um, smoky effects on the florals, watery effects, um, nothing like the typical ditzy florals that maybe you saw 10 years ago um, that were all the rage. We're talking about florals that, you know, are a little more abstract in, in, their, in their effect. Um, I think that's really where you want to, to go. Well, thanks so much. I think that's it for our questions. Um, thank you again, Michael, and everyone who attended the webinar today. Um, if you have not registered for the show, please head over to ubmfashion.com to ensure you are registered to attend. The trend presentation will be sent to you via email after the webinar for your convenience. And as always, we look forward to seeing you soon in New York and Las Vegas. And uh, thanks again for joining us. Thanks, everyone. Have a great season.